Hello, everybody. Woo. What a day. It is a lovely, lovely day. What a beautiful day, in fact. Um, just finishing up here at the gym on a wonderful Sunday here in Houston, Texas. <sighs> and we are back on video. And just wanted to touch base with y'all on a few things for the coming week. Let's see if this is okay. Da -da -da. Okay. All right. Happy, 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 happy. I got men sleeping there. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying the camera opposite way, so I might not even be in the frame right now. And that would be okay. But we're going to experiment. I don't know if you can see her. There's a tiny little dog curled up on that blanket. There's a big dog. Thank you to Pet Bar Heights and White Oak, uh, just past Tungian Creek. They groomed Jax today. Turns out he's not an extra large dog, he's a huge dog, which is more expensive, but he's a good boy, looks great, he loves water, so he gets matted on his hind legs a lot, and they always get it uh, taken care of, so, you know, can you put a price on that? You can, it's too expensive, but they do a good job, and I'm grateful for that, so thank you to Pet Bar in the Heights. Pet Bar Garden Oaks is also fantastic, he's been there um, both places Good locations. Um, okay, this week kicks off week one of the 2024 Open here at Black Wolf CrossFit. Now, Kate has designated the team captains, and she has now um, drafted the teams. The team captains are aware of the rosters, and the rosters are being communicated to y'all. If you have not received information on what team you're on, let Kate know. Kate at blackwolfcf.com. Send her an email. But you may, when you go into your email, find that she has, in fact, already communicated to you. So this week, we will not have afternoon classes on Friday. That is the only change due to the Open. The next three weeks, every Friday will be the same. So we will still run classes at 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. as well as 8.30 a.m. There will not be a 4.30 p.m. or the normal 5.45 p.m. In its place, there will be the 6.30 kickoff of the open with workout number one, which CrossFit will call 24.1. And the way that we run it, arrive around 6 p.m., we will do the briefing at 6.30 on the dot. We are uh, very proud of keeping things on schedule. We think that that makes it a lot more of an enjoyable event when you can kind of predict or at least appreciate that your time will be respected. And remember that you are participating not only in the workout itself, but you'll also be counting for somebody in a later or earlier heat. So you can't just show up and do your thing and get out of here, all right? That uh, has cut down on a lot of the um, wrong attitude, shall we say, here at Black Wolf. And we want to keep that up when you don't do it just for yourself and you have to add a minimum count for somebody. It turns out to create a better vibe uh, across the evening. And so Get here at 6, the briefing is at 6.30, and then heat one will kick off at 6.45. And then it depends on the length of the workout. CrossFit tends to like 10 to 15 minute uh, bouts of effort, but it does feel like they've gone a little bit longer recently, up to 20 minutes. And so we always like a 12 to 15 minute workout because that means we can get through four heats within two hours really, really easily. And occasionally, you know, their favorite thing is, uh, one of their favorite things I should say, is the old, uh, if you make it, you continue, and you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. That's a Disney dinosaur joke. Um, sorry. Okay, so you made it. I knew you would. Okay. It's sad they're going to get rid of that ride. They're going to revamp it into an Indiana Jones. That can't be right, though, because it's not in the right location. If you don't know the dinosaur ride in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Orlando, it is the exact same ride technology and track layout as the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland, but I think it's in California Adventure, but I could be wrong about that because I've not visited the ride ever. Um, but it's the same exact layout. And Disney purists claim that Indiana Jones is like one of the best rides ever created which then would make you think that Dinosaur is also one of the best rides ever created, but I think it's a matter of maintenance. Um, 
Disney's dinosaur ride tends to be under maintained. It kind of gets the old, the, if the ride vehicle goes, it's good enough. A lot of the uh, dinosaur animatronics, which are very cool, don't often work when people are going through the ride. The lighting, which is also really important for um, shadowing and revealing where your eye line is supposed to be, uh, or else you end up kind of just in a warehouse with a bunch of Jeeps going around in circles. You can't see the other Jeeps. You're going through corridors, but um, without the proper lighting. And so when lights don't work, they tend to not rush to fix them. And I believe the Indiana Jones ride, they maintain to a, a higher degree. And maybe that's the, the argument. Anyways, um, the whole idea is you travel back in time illegally to help rescue a dinosaur before the meteor hits the earth in order to, and I'm going to forget why, because at the end of it, you just end up with this dinosaur running through the hallways. It's not a carnivore, so it's not like a Jurassic Park thing. Like you didn't just kill a bunch of scientists in the hallways of this research lab. But yeah, I'm not really kept up on it. Anyways, the scientist, the rogue scientist who sends us back in time, um, says they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. You made it. I knew you would. So there you go. There's your Disney minute. Okay open somehow. We also run a system. Heat one uh, will be counted for by heat three. Heat two will be counted for by heat four. Heat three will be counted for by heat one and heat uh, four will be counted by heat two. And so that way you don't have to worry about finding a judge or finding someone to count for you. There's someone with a clipboard ready for you. Uh, it takes a little bit of pressure off and then we just get to run through like a well-oiled machine. So Come out, enjoy it. If you didn't sign up, come hang out. It's such a great night. Dude, the energy in this place every Friday during the Open is absolutely incredible. Y'all really blow the doors off this place. Um, and it'll be a great time. I have no doubt 2024. And along with that, it's Kate's last year with us. She's moving to California for her job, which we are very proud of her. She gets promotion. That's very exciting. But man, we are going to miss her. And so She's running the show start to finish for this open. It's the first year where I don't have to do anything. Thank you, Kate. Um, but it's also kind of like, uh, I'd rather run it if that meant you got to stay. So let's just enjoy getting three more weeks with Kate before she steps away and heads to, to Northern California to work over there at Stanford. Okay, so that is the 2024 open. We'll kick off this Friday with 24.1. What do you think it'll be? I hate guesses. I don't actually want you to guess, but if you like guessing, people tend to love to guess. If you like guessing, then put it down below. Why not? Why not toes to bar week one? Power snatch, power, power snatch and toes to bar double unders. There you go. We'll see. We'll see. I might be wrong. I'm going to see if I'm in frame.